this video, I'd like to look at some data and use Excel Solver to uh, fit it to a logistic growth model. So the data in this case is uh, the years and since the 1980s. So this is uh, 2 to 12, so 82 to 92. And these are thousands of de deaths from AIDS. And quick insert, make a quick graph to see what we're doing. It sort of the increase, the slope was a little small, and it picked up, and then the uh, slope was decreasing again. And that sort of form is a uh, characteristic of a logistic map, or that a logistic map is one possible uh, way to fit this data. It has those basic features of a small slope, bigger slope, smaller slope. So there's some inflection point where the slope is a maximum. And uh, that's what we'd like to fit this data to. Okay, so eventually I want the graph with the fit. Here is our form. Uh, this There are other forms of the logistic. Let's say if you use a calculator, uh, they, they use a slight variation on these parameters, but I like these parameters in Wikipedia, they're easy for me to understand what they are. L is what we're going up to. Uh, X is the sort of midway. It's also the inflection point or sort of as we get to half of the value. And K measures sort of how quickly uh, we go through that change. So let's come over here. I want to insert a couple of rows because that's where I'm going to put my parameters, and I'm going to have an L, an X0, X0, and a K, and I'll just start them as 1, 1, 1, just some values to get us started. And we're equaling the L divided by parentheses 1 plus the exponential and it's parenthesis minus k was c3 times, and then more parentheses. The x is, in my case, the year, which was an a5, minus this middle point, which was x0, which was c2. And close the parenthesis of the x minus x0, close the parenthesis of the exponential, close the parenthesis of the whole big denominator, and there we go. So now I want to copy this formula down, but before I do that, I want the Cs to remain fixed, but the A to change. So A is a variable, and I want it to change. Cs, the Cs are parameters, and I don't want them to change. And so I want some uh, absolute addressing. So I'm putting in dollar signs. And there's some way to do that as you type it, which I can never seem to remember. But now copy that down. And so the C's did not change. The A did. I'm going to write that this is my uh, logistic fit here and highlight uh, the three columns and insert an XY scatter. And I'm going to... This is uh, that the orange is the fit, and that's math, not data. And so let's try to uh, format it and come over here and say, uh, for the for a line, I want a solid line. And for the marker, I want uh, none. Okay. So, and then what else do I want to do while I'm here? Um, I want like uh, headers and, and access labels and such. And I often do that by going to quick layout number nine. And that's going to give me some fits that I don't want. So I will delete that fit. This other fit's going to be a little harder for me to get to, but I'll get to it eventually. Um, but it gives me, 
these axis labels. And that was the year since 1980. This was uh, deaths or thousands of deaths. This is AIDS deaths, I'll just say. And I can keep the legend or get rid of the legend. Now let me play with these parameters a little bit. The L was what we go up to. And let's just uh, play around a little bit. 40. Okay. And that gave me some access to this fit, other fit that I didn't want highlighted and deleted. Um, so the L is what we go up to. I'm going to say for now 40. The X0 is where I'm sort of halfway. So I could say uh, 8. And then the K is sort of how fast I'm doing. So right now I'm going sort of I'm going through that transition a little too rapidly. So I'd like to slow it down. So maybe a half or something like that. So I can get it close, just sort of playing around by eye. Uh, I'm going to go back and make it uh, worse, uh, 36, uh, uh, go back to 1. So I'm going to make it not great and get the uh, Excel to do it for me using Solver. So I need to you to work with Solver. I can say I want some quantity to be maximized or minimized or to achieve a certain value by varying something else. Um, and what I know, what I want to vary, I want to vary these fit parameters, but what, what, what's my target? What do I want to, in this case, minimize? And it's some measure of the, the difference between the fit and uh, the, the fit and the data. So I'm going to get a, a deviation, a difference between the data and the fit. And so that's a subtraction. And then those could be positive or negative. I could be in their places here where my data is below the curve. There are places here where my data is above the curve. And so that could be positive or negative. But either way, it's an error. And then I'm going to, so I'm going to square that so that those are always positives. So now here are all my... Uh, mistakes or errors or residuals or deviations, whatever words you want to use. Um, I'm not very precise in my language here. Um, but that is sort of per point, and we want to sort of combine all the points and uh, overall get that. And so we'll do that by the sum. So this is the sum of the square deviations. And that's the thing that we want to sort of work as our objective, as our target uh, in our solver. So next, that's what we're ready to go to next, the solver. That's under data and solver. It's an add-in. If you don't have that added in, you would go to file uh, for me more options. Uh, within that, go to add-ins. Here you can see within it's for me it's an active add-in, but if it weren't here, it's part of the analysis tool pack. So you I might not find it down here. I might see if I find it down here, I highlight it and I say go. Um, and if I don't find it down here, I'd go to analysis tool pack and then say go. But you see, if I say go, then I get this list, and then I choose the things I want within the list and say OK. So, but it's it's a weird, I always get it wrong the first time. It's it's go before OK. All right. So get yourself the solver, then go to data solver and bring up V. OK. I want this cell E4 to be the objective. I want it to be minimized. I want it to be minimized by changing these parameters. So that's the game. E4, this sum of the square deviations, that's what I want. What do I want to do to it? I want to minimize it. I want to minimize it by changing my fitting parameters.
You can add constraints. I'm not going to, I don't, I won't need to, but in certain models you may need to. Let's go with solve. Let me get this out of the way. Here's my update. Here is my data points, the dots, and my fit. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to keep those uh, fit parameters. Here they are, 41, uh, 7.8, 0. 0.56. So I was, you know, when I was just playing around, I was getting close. But um, this is sort of systematically minimizing a standard uh, measurement of error, the sum of the square deviations. So that's what I wanted to show you. Um, this, uh, how to fit some data, logistic is a sort of common fitting form when you have something that sort of starts slow, picks up, and then slows down again. Um, there are other models, but that's one of them. Um, it has a parameter for how high it's going, where the sort of main inflection halfway point is, and how fast it goes. Um, and Solver is a way within Excel that you can get it to uh, fit some parameters for you. And you can you can play with the measurement of of what you're using. So we used uh, squaring this difference. Uh, you could play games like taking the absolute value or something. So that would just weight the, the deviations, the residuals, just ever so slightly differently and maybe give you different parameters. So, so there's some sort of art to all of this, um, but this is a standard way. That's what I wanted to show you. Thanks for your attention.